All right. Hey, everybody. We are back today with Brandy of Brandy Burrow Astrology. <laughs> and we are going to be talking about the, uh, the death of the murder, the death of Lana Clarkson, who was um, murdered by Phil Spector in 2003. I'm gonna hand it over to Brandy to give a little bit of the backstory about what we're talking about in the first place. We're talking about, so <laughs> Phil Spector, if you don't know his name, you know his work. A uh, very famous rock and roll producer responsible for the girl bands, the Ronettes, Crystals, uh, the Wallace Sound, the Beatles, Let It Be, George Harrison's All Things Must Pass, so many albums. <laughs> so yeah. you know his work. Um, producer uh, in 2003, living in Los Angeles, Lana Clarkson. Now, Lana Clarkson and Phil Spector did not meet until February 3rd, 2003, the same day she's killed. But she is an American actress, fashion model, starred in lots of sit sitcoms, had small roles, also was well known for the sword and sorcery films and um, had a following through that. Now, when she hits her 30s, her career slows down. So she's trying to make ends meet. She's running a website. She has great fan following through her website. She is selling autographed DVDs. And then it comes to, you know, a time where she still needs to make ends meet. So she takes a job at House of Blues in Los Angeles. And this is where she meets Phil Spector on the night of February 3rd, 2003. So Phil Spector, kind of having a wild night, was <laughs> on. <laughs> <It's> not funny. <laughs> yeah. I'm reading this timeline and it's like, he's on date number one, the night before February 2nd. And... I guess it ends early. So then he goes on date number two. This goes is the there. funny, this is the goofy part. This is the it's just goofy. Like, it's just not his night. <laughs> uh -oh. <We're> not. <laughs> date number two and him go to a restaurant nearby. He's drinking heavily, several, several shots in these cocktails. So he he's pretty inebriated from what I understand. After midnight, goes into House of Blues. Date number two goes home. He's there. Lana Clarkson is working. He sees her and just really connects with her, wants her to stop working, come sit at his table, but her managers wouldn't let her. They're like, no, you're on the clock. Sorry, you can't. So he waits around, waits till she's off work. She ends her shift around 2.30. She walks outside. Phil Spector's car is there. His driver is there. And Phil Spector is begging her to come back to his mansion with him. She politely declines several times. She, she was tired. She did not want to go. Um, finally, she reluctantly agrees to go back to his mansion for a little bit. That's at 2.30 a.m. on February 3rd, 2003. And I believe we have that chart. A um, couple hours later, Lana Clarkson is dead from a gun, uh, gunshot wound. Excuse me. Yeah, and he comes, it's reported that he came out, um, Bill Spector came out of the house with the gun told his driver I verbatim I was trying to figure out exactly where I wrote that somewhere <laughs> but it's something something along the lines of I think I killed her I think I shot her you know or, or whatever something along those lines and yeah yeah he was a big witness in the case and he see yeah he sees Phil Spector with a gun he hears Phil Spector admit oops I I think I killed her I may have killed her and so very strong witness and and he's yeah. the one who called the police as well yeah. Should we um should we start with the uh with the chart at 2 30? The two yeah, let's do it. So this is the last time she's seen, and this was caught on security camera, which is wonderful. You get the timestamp. Um anytime there's a crime and you're looking at it through the forensic lens with astrology, the time that someone's <laughs> last seen alive is a great chart to start with. Yeah. And having a timestamp. Not just like, a, oh, I think it was a, you know, whatever time this is, yeah, on, on footage. So that's cool. Yeah. Okay. We, yeah, this is a pretty good chart. We got, you know, Lana Clarkson's our victim. So she's going to be represented by the ascendant ruler, ascendants in Sagittarius. So she's going to be represented by Jupiter and Leo in that eighth house of death. Yes. Yeah. And um, so it's like, it's like showing the ball. Has, has started, even though this isn't actually when she died, the ball has definitely uh, been set in motion. Yes, and, and we got some good indicators here that, you know, she's saying no at first. I'm convinced she had a vibe because when you're looking at this chart, you got Mars and Pluto 
together right there on the ascendant. This is danger. And I don't, I just feel like she sensed something maybe was off or just wasn't a good idea. You got the South node right there. That's things spiraling down. Yeah. And it's almost, you know, it's also, you know, with that, with that fifth house having Aries on that cusp and like Mars being right there, it does feel like, um, like she probably did feel like it was risky. Yeah. Uh, since that fifth house can deal with taking risks and, and stuff like that, it does. Yeah. 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 And that moon that co-rules her mm -hmm. is in the third house of cars. You know, he's begging her to get into the car and come mm -hmm. home. So that that's playing out literally. And then we got Phil Spector in this chart represented the descendant in Gemini. So he's going to be the Mercury and Capricorn in the second house. Yeah. And that, and that Mercury, I, and I know that we don't really, I know that you're not really quote, supposed to look at Chiron here for this, but like in this chart, and then the other chart that we'll show in just a few minutes, I can't like not look at this, this Mercury conjunct Chiron. I, mm -hmm. it just, <laughs> ugh, uh, it doesn't feel like it bodes very well. It, it, and, and again, just to be clear for anybody watching this, I'm certainly not saying that about all Mercury conjunct Chiron in any kind of chart specifically in this sort of a chart uh, for this sort of thing. It just doesn't uh, feel very nice. <laughs> yeah. um, and also with him, with him being Mercury, it almost seems like he, second house is like, you know, resources, um, values, that kind of shit. Mm -hmm. it, it almost feels like he, like he wanted to take something from her. Yes. Um, yes. And in these charts, especially when you're looking at forensically and astrology, the second house can come up with abduction or keeping people against their will or trying, yeah. like you said, trying to take. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, 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 I, and I know that sounds kind of strange because it's not a, like, this is, I mean, she did go with him, but it does, it does seem like she, the reluctance, you know, could have made her somewhat feel like she was kind of taken if you will even even though like that, had no choice like yes especially if she felt I mean you know with somebody like that if you were trying to like get your career going again in a certain direction you know having somebody having contact like that wouldn't yeah. be a bad thing so yeah <laughs> yeah and she was really at the time I kind of left this part out she's at the time really trying to revive her career and, and that's why she went to work at House of Blues, because there's a lot of connections there. You get a lot of famous people. Mm -hmm. um, she's really smart. She's a really smart person. She was actually trying to kind of turn the career around instead of doing what she was doing before. She was always a beautiful blonde in, in these shows and movies. She actually wanted to go into comedy. And so, yeah, uh, maybe at this point, it's like, well, you know, maybe this person can help me, I, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and and I wouldn't have, I wouldn't blame her if she did, you know, if she did, you know. Um, should we look at some of the fixed stars? Yeah. Okay. So, um, okay, so that rising, that Sagittarius rising, um, is very, and I, I'm shit at pronouncing things, so <laughs> we'll try. Me I'm gonna try. Too. Me too. <laughs> um, Antares. Uh, is that 946 Sagittarius? Um, this one represents uh, spirit of adventure, obstinacy, injuries to the eyes, honors, sudden loss, stubborn, suspicious, violent, and several marriages. Okay, so the several marriages thing. I realized that he, he was not actually married to her, right? But he was on like several dates that night. Um, and her having been like the last of the day, I don't know. That does kind of seem interesting to me that. <laughs> that is, that's, that's a weird connection. Yeah, yeah, it is kind of. Um, okay, so Jupiter is at 12. Leo, that one ties in with, um, where the hell is it? Hold on. Um, okay, a Cubans is at 1335, Leo. It tends to, it represents astrology, writing, perseverance, domestic problems, poison, and liars. Oh, okay. Um, 
domestic problems. Yep. Yeah. I think that um, applies. I mean, they didn't know each other until this night, but still it's kind of domestic. Like, you know, mm-hmm. even if we use the word friend loosely, cause they just met, you know, they're at his house and there's obviously some sort of <laughs> disagreement or, you know, yeah, I don't, I don't even know. I, we can get into that when we see the death chart. That is, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I, I think it can. I mean, this did take place at his at his house. That is, yeah. I mean, that I feel like that could fit there for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, then the the um, I'm gonna I'm gonna totally fuck this one up again. Um, Do it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So um, at nine, okay, we're looking at the descendant at eight thirty-three, Gemini. That is close to um, that's close to um, Aldi. Jesus, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce. <laughs> and I shouldn't know how to do this. I shouldn't know how to pronounce this one, but I don't. It's Aldebaran. Aldebaran. I don't know how to pronounce shit. I don't um, either. Know either. I read it, and that's all I. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> um, eloquence, high honors, integrity, popularity, courage, warmongering, and agitation. Mm, so agitation, that, that's the one I'm focusing on. Yeah, yeah, because it does seem like, I mean, I, I mean, it seems like he probably would have, I mean, would have been agitated having like two, two having you know already gone through two dates that night that might be kind of agitating um and perhaps other things too but you know you know and um yeah and this chart like just looking at it with hindsight and you know knowing what's happened saturn which represents the actual body and a forensic chart being in the seventh house like this is just so much of a premonition of what's what's going to happen like the body on his her body on his property yep Uh yeah it is in his his house in his space which is really creepy when you you know when you're looking at it is it is there this is a strong chart yeah kind of like we started with that mars and pluto in the first saturn in the seventh chart ruler being in the eighth house like it's, it's, it's tough. Yeah. And, and it makes it sad. Cause she was fighting so hard saying, no, I don't really want to go. I don't want to go. Okay, fine. I'll go for just a little bit, you know? And yeah. And should we look at the, uh, should we look at the five? Yeah. So 5 AM is when she is killed is when the, um, call came into nine one one. Okay. So this would be her death time. So here we've got, and again, I can't not notice that, that Chiron and Mercury right there. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So in this chart, we have, we have, uh, we have Capricorn rising and we have, um, we have Saturn in the sixth, which represents her. It represents her and the biggest thing that stands out in this chart, because I think the 2.30 a.m. chart is really the chart we're looking at for the crime, but this being her death time, biggest thing that stands out is that Saturn, which would rule her, well, now is Saturn, which represents a body in the sixth house and in horror astrology or in forensic astrology, which is basically the same model. Sixth house comes up when someone is running away or trying to run away. Yeah. It's just the house you look at. And so like if someone's missing and you're getting a lot of sixth house stuff, sometimes it's that they just ran away. They're, that they're not, you know, they're not dead, but you know, whatever. But this is like odd because she ends up dead and she's represented as running away or trying to. And even like in the, like she was found. She was found with like, in a chair with her purse on right and like she was wanting to like oops wanting to like not be there anymore perhaps purse on the shoulder yeah right by you know in the entryway so there's a front door there's a pretty large hallway but there is this um 
I'm going from memory. I've watched the documentary, but there's like this table there, like a credenza or something with a drawer, which is where this gun was kept. And Phil Spector has a history of not letting people leave his house. And so many accounts from women and just friends too, male and female, that when it came time to leave, he would almost get into a panic. He did not like being alone. And so this, you know, the guns would come out and he would hold people at gunpoint a lot of times. It wouldn't let them leave. So he has this history. So it's not out of character for him to, I mean, that's like totally not normal at all, but it's not out of character for him to have. Yeah, exactly. And, and of course his story, of course he tells the driver, Oh shit, I killed somebody basically. But then after, you know, investigation starts, his story turns and he's like, no, she was upset and she saw my gun and she killed herself. Like, yeah, that was yeah. his. Um, so in this chart, he is represented by cancer, by the, by the cancer uh, descendant and the moon in the second house. Yes. So we can no longer use the moon for her co-ruler. It's going to actually be um, representing Phil Spector here. Now, there is a couple of things in these charts that are just not common. And, and where I'm going with that is that we're not ever seeing the first and seventh house planets connect. And that's so odd to me. Oh, do, do you think it could be? Well, I don't. Well, I guess that's, that's, not, what that's I not usual, you know, um, and we talked about that, like in the Kurt Cobain case. That yeah. That. Um, so that one I'm struggling with, with these charts. I'm like, you know, this guy does use what it has sometimes. And so I'm like, uh, where, where are we seeing the connection here? Could it be, um, this, this probably doesn't actually make any sense, but <laughs> could it be that they didn't really know one another that well that's why it's not could be but, this, but then i think, but then I think to myself, what oh i was say it's definitely not premeditated yeah i don't get the yeah i don't get the feeling that it is either and it it, it does feel accidental yeah like and i agree with that i think it's what i call an accidental homicide like <laughs> I don't think he wanted her to die and meant to for that gun to go off. I think over the struggle and, you know, he gets out a gun, puts it up to her, puts it in her mouth. It's probably being intense. He probably didn't mean for it to go off. Do you think there could have been any weird, um, I don't know, sex shit with the gun thing? Hmm. On his part, yeah, maybe. I don't think she was in, I don't get the sense she was on board. Yeah. Yeah. No, I meant more with, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sure. He's, he's, he does things differently. We know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Possibly. It's kind of odd to shove it in someone's mouth. It, it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is, uh, uh, yeah. You, yeah. Of course, I mean, we're dealing with someone who's been drinking heavily for hours. This is true. Somebody that's probably not making the best life choices that yeah. they could possibly make. <laughs> yeah. So that's something to keep it. That's something interesting. I'd like to actually um, just study more in like, you know, I, cases that are accidental homicides where the perpetrator doesn't mean to kill the victim. We'll have to see about how those <laughs> rulerships meet up. Yeah, no, that, that is, a, yeah. Cause that, um, you know, that does happen where Act, but then, but then, you know, I mean, yeah, this, I do think this was an accident, but then I think to myself, he's act, kind of an asshole thing to do to pull out five. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, you may not have meant to do it, but it is an asshole thing to, to do, you know? Like if you're going to have guns and he was known to actually shoot the guns in the house, like shoot at the ceilings when he was like, not wanting people to leave. And like, but you would just think like, if you're not wanting to actually kill somebody, why would you keep those guns loaded? And it's just, nothing's makes sense about it, but yes, it, it it's, negligent. <laughs> it's just negligent, but yeah, yeah, it, it really is. Um, 
is there anything like with his with his uh with him being represented by um by the moon in the second what is that like i think this is the same thing we're seeing in the 230 chart trying to in a way kidnap her you know, you know not letting her leave keep the her. same kind of the same kind of thing. yeah because this is also the house of possessions you know um and being in can and like having that yeah i mean it, in that case it definitely feels even more like clingy because it's in you know that that descendant is, is in cancer right so it's like no don't yeah. leave me you know like yeah 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 and yeah a cancer descendant cancer is literally the home like mm -hmm. yeah it's yeah unfortunate you know um yeah i, I don't know it's just it's just it's just so so much sadness here because she didn't want to go she goes this happens you know he just you know his life is over at this point because he's convicted yeah. of this crime and goes to prison and ends up dying in prison so just terrible yeah Sense, senseless that's what i want to say yeah it is it is really senseless and like all of it's just very unnecessary yeah and i and i want to say this this is brandy's opinions here but um and, and not everybody's going to be i'm a big music lover have lots of friends in music and not everybody would agree with this and, and it's sensitive but I just, nothing about these charts screams a suicide. So for Phil Spector's defense to be suicide, that she committed suicide in his home is just, there's nothing in this charts that support that. I'll say that it, it supports the opposite. Yeah, I don't see, I mean, I don't see it in the charts and I also don't see it like logically, like, okay, this, this, she gets off work. She doesn't even know him. Mm -hmm. She's going to go kill herself in somebody that she doesn't even know like it doesn't even logically make any any sense no no that makes no sense logically forensically in astrology it shows she's entering some violence yeah and you know especially in the 230 chart and yeah should we see um let me see uh that for her being um 22 27 gemini let me see uh the saturn i mean uh yeah. let me see 20 oh well there's a whole bunch right around there okay so there's there are two right around there it's probably the closest to uh elnath at 2226 we well, yeah, 2226 right because it's like just like a it's right right there um luck fortune success quarrels and headstrong mm. it's it's also uh close to one named uh, alan shit alan am Al, alan am something like that um brief fame, brief fame quick temper scandal that makes sense yeah the quarrels scandals because this uh -huh. turned into a big big thing i mean i can't remember how many years this was because the first trial ended in a mistrial you had one or two jurors that just didn't know couldn't make a decision then second time of course he was convicted um so, so that makes sense you know everything around yeah. that now if you want to follow the rulers from the 230 chart which was jupiter and mercury right uh -huh. you follow them in this chart what I find interesting is Lana being Saturn in the sign of Gemini in Phil Spector's sign, Mercury sign from the earlier chart. Yes. And his moon Which kind and of, then sign, you know. And it kind of, yeah, it feels like it does kind of connect, like. Maybe this is our connection. Maybe it, it very well could be. I mean, it, 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 it could be. Her body is in his sign. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it really could be. Yeah. Um, let's see if there's one for him for that moon at nine Pisces. Right? Yeah, nine degrees, one minute of Pisces. Uh okay, that's near one uh 852 Pisces. It's scat, 
I think that's how it's pronounced. Good fortune, personal charm, um, lasting happiness, psychic interest, sensitivity, occult interest, and many friends. Hmm. Many he did have many friends. He had a lot of friends supporting him. Yes. Yeah. Many. Yeah. That's that's kind of the one that I'm. That I kind of uh, that stands out the most to me here. The many friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do we want to look at maybe his birth chart just to kind yep. of see what kind of person are we dealing with? Like, are, are there any markers in his in Phil Spector's birth chart that would? Yeah. Yeah. I'm people? also looking. There's I, there's something also one one other thing, and I know. I'm looking at like that moon. It's like squaring the nodes. Yeah. I don't know. There's some, I can't quite put my finger on exactly how I want to. Sometimes I have a, that problem. I'll like think something, <laughs> I have problems articulating it, but there is something that feels kind of, um, especially with him being re represented, like by that, like, um, feels kind of fady yeah in a way yeah yeah um and a lot of theories behind the north and south node is past life it's karmic uh -huh. you know j just depending on how you look at those so that would make sense or like i almost or like he could like okay like i kind of get this feeling like he could have gone either way here mm -hmm. i don't i don't know i like this is the way he chose <laughs> yeah um let me see i'll pull his birth chart okay which one is okay it is uh yeah i know he's a capricorn december 26 yes so this yes. is his birth chart we actually have his birth time it's um the time was taken from his birth certificate so we got a real birth chart here um Dude, that moon would have been is that oh okay Sorry, I was getting excited. Okay. About it, doesn't, it doesn't exist. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> it exists somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So we got his Capricorn sun in the seventh house. Not everybody. You got to look at the whole chart, but there's indications here of being a little codependent, not like being alone. So this kind of makes sense for, doesn't make sense, doesn't excuse, but you know, the, the stories about him not wanting people to leave, he hated being alone. Uh, it's the sun in the seventh house thing going on here. Yeah. Posing that moon. Yeah. <laughs> in the first, <laughs> independence yes. versus partnerships at war with each other. Yes. Yeah, there probably was. And that, like, um, even that, I mean, I know it's an Aquarius. I, I, I know it's an Aquarius, but Venus in the eighth. Mm -hmm. There can sometimes be... Um, Sometimes I found, not universally, but sometimes I found that there could be some like, um, sometimes can be some codependent stuff with that too. That makes sense. Um, we have this in an equal house system. So funny because I always use whole sign. <laughs> this is just, wow, it must have been, I've had this pulled for a while, obviously, but yeah, that definitely. Um, and I know he came from not a great childhood some abusiveness, um, neglect. And we, you know, when we're looking at the fourth and 10th house rulers. We got Mercury and Sagittarius in a detriment, you know, we got Jupiter in Aries, you know, it's not, um, strong or debilitated, but childhood and you got Neptune in the fourth house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and childhood stuff at play. Yeah. But going back to that Venus in the eighth house, so you want to look at the houses that are ruled by Venus, which would be the fifth house and, and the twelfth house. Yeah. And they're ruled by Venus, which is seated in a house of loss. So these are areas that will create loss for him drinking, fifth house, having fun, mm -hmm. uh, dating. This is where romance, like early romance, is started. Twelfth house, anxieties nervousness uh -huh. like it's, um so looking back kind of an interesting place it is it it is yeah it yeah it, it is um that they'll both bend to both of those will bend to that that venus in the in the eighth yeah uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
And is that it's out of sign? It's also squaring his squaring his nodes. Yeah, it's within. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, five degrees. Out, degrees yeah. out of it is out of sign, but yeah, that's uh, huh. Okay, and it's Venus is the ruler of the North Node. Um, yes. So if you want to get, and I love evolutionary astrology. It's like my favorite <laughs> thing to use with the North and South Nodes here. But um, yeah, if you kind of want to look at what's going on, if you believe in past lives, um, he's got Saturn on the South Node. So there's something about being victimized in a past life, being restricted, having strong authority not go well for him. Um, and of course, the North Node in uh, Libra is learning to trust people or, you know, it could go all sorts of directions, but definitely some karmic things going down in, in this life. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that totally like... Um... Now I'm just going to want to sit and stare at this. Okay. <laughs> just yeah. Like a lot of times, not every time, but sometimes when you get that Venus squaring the South and North node like that, it can be like maybe in a past life, like something happening with female mm -hmm. presence, females getting in the way, being victimized by them or something like that. And in, in the current life, it's learning about dealing with that power, with that authority. Um, you know, he was very controlling with women that, that when he was married to Ronnie Spector, it, it was, she had to escape barefoot. He took away all her shoes so she couldn't leave. <laughs> you know, Which is he, awful. He bought her children for Christmas. He came home with babies and it was like, she was like, I didn't say I wanted a baby. You know, like, so he was very controlling or, or known to be. I wonder if there, even like the square could be like, you know, cause we're talking about the sign of a, like, like weird ass values. Yeah. <laughs> like, but you know, like, uh, yeah. very unconventional with Aquarius. Yeah. And perhaps, you know, the eighth house is like, uh, it's a little bit more, it's more hidden. It's a little more secret. Mm -hmm. Uh, other, yeah. Well, I could go on and on about that. Lots of secrets there. Yeah. And speaking of values, <clears throat> you go to the second house to look at someone's values as well. You got Pluto there and Chiron. Yes. Which doesn't particularly um, feel like the easiest thing in the world. Yeah. Like at all. This is someone with Chiron here. I think that's safe to say someone who definitely deals with self-esteem issues, self-value, even though he's very successful in his career, um, you know, is responsible for some of rock and roll's best albums. I mean, but not feeling great about who he is. Yeah. Is his, is his chart, is his, I need to go back and look, is his, uh, is his descendant conjunct the ascendant with the first chart? The first chart was eight degrees Sagittarius. <clears throat> okay, so it's like it's eight degrees. Okay, that's interesting. And and then the descendant would have been at eight degrees Gemini, which is very close to the ascendant in his. That's interesting. Yeah. Do you know what else is interesting? If you compare now, I don't have Lana Clarkson's birth time, but I have a you know a general chart pulled up. Okay. Um, if you compare their charts, do a composite, not a composite. I'm sorry, a synastry. Let's see. Because you sent me that, right? That one? Yes. Okay. It's probably okay, the I see. third one. Yeah. There we go. But look at this. If you look at, we'll start with him, his Pluto, two degrees Leo in that third house. He's the inner chart. And then um, let's find Venus for her. Venus, uh. yeah, two degrees Taurus which is landing in one, it's landing in his 12th house. It is squaring Pluto for him. That is a powerful. Oh, it is like connection. It, it's instant when, so he, it makes sense why he's very drawn to her. Okay. Most of, yeah. Yeah. Now her Pluto is seven degrees Virgo in that, you know, fourth house for him. And let me see where the sun his son, four degrees Capricorn, is trining her Pluto. 
So this is different. He's connected to her probably, um, I always use the word romantically, but that's not always like consensual here, but he really likes her. He's attracted to her. Uh -huh. She feels like she's not necessarily attracted to him in the same you know, sense, but she can feel that there's something powerful about him. Probably the connections, the names, yeah. who he knows. So this right here kind of gives some insight on why she, maybe she finally said, yes, okay, fine, I'll go. The Pluto yeah. are strong and making strong connection in each other's charts. And look at the look at her her uh, her south node conjunct his midheaven. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I mean they're both at six. That's hmm. yeah. So south node can be looked at as the downward spiral, as I like to say, things going the wrong direction, right on his career. Yeah, now, his that's... career had been stalled out. He was not really doing much as far as like producing. But from what I understand, he was wanting to get back in it. Yeah. So, yeah, that's not a good match for someone who wants to get things rolling again, career wise. Yeah. That's really, I, I actually, I, I know you sent me this a little bit ago. I hadn't actually looked at this, this particular one yet. And I'm like, damn. Yeah, and we might have her moon on his south node. We don't know yep. what time he was born, but either way, it's within degree. It's yeah. pretty, you know, depending on if she was born around 5 a.m., that's pretty tight. So, yeah, we they both have things with the south nodes going on, too. There's, yeah, I want to, you know, I want to be careful saying, like, murders are karmic. Like, I I just feel like that's insensitive, but it's like, there's yes, something no, I, going on, though. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, yeah, and if I, if what I said earlier came off insensitive, I didn't, yeah, I didn't mean it, like, but it is like, a, yeah, this is interesting. Yeah, and, um, yeah, I think just looking at it astrologically, when you need, see the south nodes meet up, it's like, something's going on with the energies here, what, what's being balanced, or what's, you know, yeah. Yeah. What's the purpose? It's usually purpose of some sort. And again, I hate it. Didn't it didn't necessarily have to go this no. this way? It could. I mean, it could have gone other ways. But there probably was some purpose for them for meeting up. Yes, for meeting up. Yes, exactly. Like <clears throat> there's some sort of karma to be balanced. Maybe he could have helped her with the career. Yeah. He knows, you know. Or yeah. So yeah, he definitely. Karma does not have to be balanced in one way. And yeah, I don't see the purpose of anything getting balanced with this. I just see it creating more of a shit storm if you believe in, you know, reincarnation and things continuing. So yeah. 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 Is there anything else you want to say about um anything before we uh before we head off? And I just, you know, I'll end with I think from what I have done in research and have learned about Lana Clarkson, brilliant, amazing, talented, beautiful person. Um, and it's just such a sad story. Phil Spector, also talented. Um, wish things could have gone a different way for that. It's just terrible. Yeah, it, it really is. Um, especially since it sounds like they were, you know, both trying to kind of not start over, but yeah, re revive things and yeah. 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 At a point in their life, like for her feeling hopeful, you know, like trying to make ends meet, trying to make things work, but also feeling hopeful. Like I'm yeah. going to do this with my life. It's gonna, I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to become a comedian and do what makes me happy. And yeah, it's sad. Yeah. Me. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And she is um, interred at the Hollywood forever cemetery. If you guys ever go out there, go pay respects to her. It's a beautiful cemetery. Great place for someone who was so talented and yeah. I'll leave <laughs> Do you want to share where you can be found? Yeah, Brandy Burrow Astrology.com. Also on YouTube and Instagram under Brandy Burrow Astrology. I do natal chart readings, transit readings, 
and believe it or not, tarot readings. <laughs> <laughs> and Ellie, where can we find you? <laughs> um, you can find me at SaturnSeason.com, on Instagram at Saturn Season Astrology, and on YouTube at Let's F with Astrology. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ellie. I appreciate you having me on to discuss this. It's a, another interesting case and enjoy Let's hearing see. your thoughts. And thank you for wanting to do this. <laughs> Always. <laughs> and I guess we will see you all later. <laughs>